Hello there, thanks for coming by PosterCentral.com's video blog today. I'm Pete Howard and I've got three unused tickets to show you today from the Rolling Stones' third American tour, which was the spring of 1965. Now, unlike the previous two tours in 64, what was nice about this jaunt is the Stones finally had a couple of top ten hits they could tout and to help sell tickets. That would be Time Is On My Side the previous fall, which hit the top ten after their second tour ended, and currently the last time. So this first ticket, as you can see, is orange. It's from uh, Ottawa, Canada and uh, Saturday evening, April 24th of 1965. Kind of interesting the way it's the YMCA, but the way they worded it there at the top, it's YM-YWCA, <laughs> including both men and women of Ottawa, Canada. And then it says, the treble clef presents the Rolling Stones. And it's a floor seat for $3. And it's kind of simple, you know, obviously 64, 65 things were still simple. Notice that uh, it's just row R, seat 16. So it wasn't this big elaborate stadium with three sections per row and all that stuff. So I find that kind of quaint. Now, Bill Wyman's book, Stone Alone, which goes into great details about the Stones' whole touring years, uh, said there were 30 cops on stage throughout this show, and they cut the power like six times, spoiling the show for everyone. So, um, you know, hey, sort of typical, I guess, although never, usually not that bad, but it's nice to have Wyman. He kept a diary and has such good notes. Okay, for the second Spring 65 unused tickets I have here for to show you is from Worcester, Massachusetts. It's a green one, quite a contrasting color there to the orange. And this is for Friday, April 30th. And a fairly straight ahead plane ticket. As you can see, it does say presented by DB Enterprises. I just love these early rock and roll tours where the promoters were different in every city and sometimes fly by night and sometimes just fun abbreviations and all that. Um, Wyman didn't have much to say about this show, but what I did manage to dig up to uh, relate to this ticket is a fun photograph taken at that exact show in Worcester, Massachusetts, April 30th of 65, and credit the photographer here, Edward Grazda, took this picture. Okay, so the last ticket's the one I've really been looking for on this uh, Spring 65 tour. Oh my goodness, this thing is... Um, uh, let's see, I don't want to lose my place. Okay, May 22nd, Saturday, you're probably already distracted by the visual of this crazy thing. Um, by the way, I should mention first, between the ticket I just showed you, the green one, and this one, all the Stones did were, was go into the recording studio and record Satisfaction, which, you know, not even arguably is the signature song of their entire career. So, I guess you could say with this ticket, the newly dissatisfied Rolling Stones played uh, Fresno, California, you could almost call it a small town, uh, in the uh, Central Valley of California on May 22nd. And by the way, two days before this ticket stuff, or ticket, unused ticket, I should say, they premiered worldwide satisfaction on the Shindig TV show in Los Angeles. But getting to this ticket, this might be, now look, this might be the craziest, wackiest Rolling Stones ticket ever. I mean, on either side of the Atlantic, anywhere, it's crazy. Um, for one thing, the radio station letters dwarf the band names. Look at that big K-Make Presents. It's actually K-M-A-K, -K, but uh, they pronounced it K-Make. Um, and you got that little Monopoly man down in the corner. Look at that. This is trimmed, actually. There's a little bit more of him that shows. But, of course, the wildest, craziest thing about this, besides being such an obvious one-off ticket, is a, a 10 a.m. starting time. Rolling Stones, 10 a.m. Is there any other ticket in Stones history that has an a.m. starting time? Maybe 1 a.m. or a really late start, but oh my god, Breakfast with the Stones, huh? That's just remarkable. That's amazing. Now, the Stones themselves did not come in, come on, however, in the morning, and I actually have first-hand knowledge of this because I'm happy to say that my wife actually attended this show. And, uh, they, you know, it said 10 a.m., but there were opening acts. And that was my wife of 22 years, Cheryl Hopper of Visalia, California, near Fresno. And she clearly remembers one of the opening acts because the guy on the mic said, would you please welcome this new band from Los Angeles? We think they're going to go places. They're up-and-comers. Please welcome the Birds. And, of course, the Birds just had Mr. Tambourine Man, their first single, had just entered the charts one week earlier and would go on to number one. So <laughs> you saw more than the Stones when you saw them in Fresno in 65. Um, I got a couple pictures to show you, actually, from the Stones on stage. You'll be able to see the radio station logo. I believe Bob Bonus took these photos. He w worked with the Stones and the Beatles at the time. And uh, it's a beautiful picture, obviously, of Mick on stage there and everything for this uh, 
10 a.m. show, although this probably, of course, was around lunchtime when the Stones came on, but just beautiful documentation. That's really wonderful. And one of the reasons the Stones played such an early show in Fresno is because they flew up to Sacramento, the state's capital, for a show that evening. So it was one of those two different cities in one day things, which were not uncommon for the Stones at the time. Interestingly, a, a newspaper reporter that covered this show wrote the next day that uh, it turned into a full-scale demand for puberty rights, <laughs> just with teenage girls everywhere. And, uh, you know, they reported that 75 policemen eventually circled the bandstand to keep the fans off the stage, and utter pandemonium still broke out, and the show was stopped after just 28 minutes. And a matter of fact, from the same photographer, a little bit of documentation of that, there's the, the, the stage and the bandstand, I love that Keith Richards there, you know, and there's the fan, look how, you know, when you compare it to concerts of today, it's crazily innocent and naive, isn't it? Look at that, just great documentation. And then one more of a cop hauling off a hysterical fan, and, uh, you know, just great to have with a ticket, this kind of color photo documentation is wonderful. That looks a lot like my wife, but I really think she would have told me if that had happened. <laughs> so, anyway, three unused Stones tickets from their third U.S. tour in the spring of 65. Great stuff. Thanks a lot for coming by, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.